Here we go. Let's do this. We've got one life, one shot. Who do you want to be? What do you want to do? Addicted to Betterment, a podcast to inspire us to keep going, to try something new, to dream, to think big, bigger, to overcome. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. David and Nikki, ready to flow. So our mind is a powerful player in our outcomes. We are so often the problem. We, as individuals, are the problem, the biggest problem that contributes to these outcomes. We don't have total control. Let's just all anchor in that. We're not able to control all things in the world, but dang, there's a lot of things that we can control. We have a lot more control than we remember in the moments because if we were fully conscious of our control in the moment, we wouldn't choose the chess moves or let's say checkers moves that we do. So we're here to give each other a swift kick in the booty today to get more conscious about manifesting or staying locked in to the intention to win the day. And winning one day at a time is on the chess side of things, right? Not playing checkers, playing chess. So let me give you a quick example about what made this a hot topic for our list of priorities for recording episodes. Recently, right after church, we were with all the boys and we went out to lunch. Prior to this day, home had been a little challenging. We just recently lost our 13-year-old English bulldog, Tonka Jane, The emotions at home have been challenging, just kind of the woe is me, and rightfully so, dealing with a loss situation like that. But I chose to continue that and bring that to this day when our family is getting together. And then David chose a lunch location, this restaurant that I didn't feel was going to be a very good place to bring the boys. It's expensive. It's just too polished for the group of us going that day. I was just like, I don't want to be here. I'm not in a great place. This is the dumbest location you could possibly choose, right? I'm saying that a little extreme, but it's actually really true. And you know what happened? That lunch for me and the ripple effect on others was really a disaster. I had a coaching session the following week, and I came to that coaching session ready to complain. I'm still reeling from this terrible lunch and just frustrated about it. And the response that I got that honestly, at first I could not accept was I designed that experience. I brought the energy to that experience that really created that. So what if I had worked on myself that day to say, yes, we lost our dog and man, it's hard. We get very few times with everyone together for lunch to be able to have this experience. How do I set that aside, still have my feelings, but bring my best foot forward to bring some good energy to the table. I might not be operating at my 100, but to be at 80% and to be energized and good energy coming into that, what if I would have done that? What if I would have embraced the location and said, this could be fun. We could really enjoy this space. It's a nice place to be able to treat the boys, right? How could the outcome have been different if I would have walked in that way and in my mind told myself, This lunch is going to be a memorable one. We're going to have a great time and we're really going to engage. And I might be a little off, but we're going to have really powerful conversation today. How would that situation have been different if I took ownership to lead and to be able to come in and sit down at the lunch table that day? Still kicking my tail about it a little bit. And we want to talk today on the power of our intention, how we manifest situations and the outcomes. And sometimes we'll set out to manifest those and they don't always go as planned. Some dumpster fire can happen in the middle of the lunch, but how do we pivot as quickly as possible to get back on track and just not throw our hands up and go with the trail down the path and keep it on the upward? So that's what we're here really to talk about today. David, you want to add into that? Here's the reality. Often the challenges that I face, I freaking created them myself. And one of the things we're committed to on this podcast is real, raw, and solutions to design and create a better life. That is our mission and to impact everyone on this journey with us to do that. And so my hope for this episode is that you can relate directly to some of the experience and stories that we share vulnerably. Nikki, thank you for sharing vulnerably that story because I know how 
hard that is to share, especially publicly. So thank you for that. But man, so often the challenges that I face, whether it's a business meeting, whether it's a challenging coworker that I'm thinking he might lose his shit if things don't go a certain way or this deal that I'm working really hard on, it might go down the tubes if these certain things don't fall into place. So often I'm manifesting and creating the problems unnecessarily. And the reality is the problem that you're facing in an area in your life, if you're listening to this, our hope is that from this episode, you might be able to take a step back and say, am I creating this problem myself? Am I using the power of my mind, my actions to design the outcome that I'm hoping for? Or am I using excuses or manifesting the problems that exist? And so thank you for uh, highlighting that so perfectly in that story. That's pretty powerful. Thank you. Yeah. So you've probably heard the long time quote, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right, which was a Henry Ford quote. And gosh, it's been used over and over again for a reason. I think many of us can get recentered in that, that what's in our mind is really predicting the future. So what we focus on expands. Law of attraction is a very real thing. And Mike Dooley, I love his quote around thoughts become things. And so how do we take responsibility for that in our conscious daily efforts to pursue whatever it is in our life wheel that we're wanting to accomplish? And so whether we're in a situation at work that's challenging and this one person or these couple of people that every time we get together, there's some hiccups, right? And it starts to get in our mind that I can never have a good conversation with these people. There is never a great outcome that comes when I'm with this group. When we do that, the outcome is probably going to be that. And so how do we flip that on its head? And what are the key things that we have to be conscious about to design different outcomes? Because our belief is going to guide us towards that outcome, right? So I think there's two sides of this. It's manifestation, which is really the belief, I believe, and then the action that we're taking towards this. So in a business meeting, what does that look like? Today is going to be different. Today, we are going to be engaged. We're going to be inspired. We're going to walk out and say, this was the best meeting we've ever had. Now, that's real stuff right there. It's not just Pollyanna, pink, rose-filled glasses. We can really change our thoughts to believe something different, to create that if that's authentically what you're wanting and that you're going to play a part. I mean, you have to authentically say, yes, I believe this because I want that and I'm going to show up that way as well. That's key to this. Otherwise, everything would be pretty much fake, right? So that's one side of changing the outcome of the trajectory of these meetings. The other side is, what is the action that I'm going to take to create a different experience? So maybe before we've never really set the tone for the meeting. And so now we're going to do something different and say, the intention for this meeting today is to create a solution. We want to create a solution. And hey, guys, we want to enjoy the time together. Let's have an enjoyable meeting. So I know in the past you said things that we didn't want to say. Let's be very aware of our words that we're using today. And let's create a solution together and let's enjoy the time and be respectful. So just setting that groundwork up front could be a complete game changer in order to get there. So I think manifesting or believing, and then what are my actions to be able to change the outcome? Nikki, that's so good. So it's interesting as you were just sharing that, I'll share a personal story that in my business world, I have a couple colleagues that I work with who I might say are volatile individuals and often are approaching meetings together that, oh boy, I know that this is going to happen. This one's going to possibly lose his shit, or this one's possibly going to take things very personal or negative, or one thinks maybe the other one is out to get him or is looking to undermine him or something like that. And so I've learned recently, if I can help those two individuals in that meeting and do this for myself, try to set the intention with them of, Hey, see this a different way. See the other colleague in a different way that he's on your team. He really does want to help you. He really does. And try to position that so that they are joining me in the intention of accomplishing the goal in the meeting versus going in expecting that this is going to be volatile. It's going to end up in an argument. 
nothing's going to get accomplished because we're going to face these challenges that we faced before, but really helping work with them on setting the intention to let's come to this in a collaborative way, trying to be curious from the other person's perspective and actually just setting the intention that, Hey, this guy is on my team. He's not trying to hurt me. He's trying to help me because it's often easy. We take things personally and we think people are often out for their own agenda. And the reality is if we realize, oh man, this isn't at all what I thought it was, but I created this environment in my head. And sure enough, we got into this heated discussion. Nothing was accomplished. I left the meeting pissed. We did not accomplish our objectives. When if we had just went in with a different outcome in mind and a different intention set, I've seen it powerful at work in my own business circle at this moment. So I think our swift kick in the booty is asking ourselves, what is the mindset that I brought to this situation? How did I contribute just by where my mindset was when I walked in and got started? And how did I bring intentional action to help us behave and help us to operate in a certain way because I took the preparation time to do it to guide us, right? And each person has the power to do that. And so as we move forward, it's a very conscious choice, kind of like listening. It's a constant effort. We have to be very conscious about our listening. Otherwise we're going to interrupt. We're thinking about our stuff before somebody gets done. Same thing is to create and design the outcomes of how we want to live. It is a consistent choice in our mind Am I in the belief pattern that is going to set me up for this best outcome? And am I taking the actions to get there? So let's talk about it in terms of health. I think all of us can lock in on that where it's like we're all fighting battles on our health. You know, we have great weeks, we have challenging ones, but the talk track that we have, we set up Mondays or we've got our plan. Here we go. And it's like we had Monday and Tuesday and then we fell off the wagon and then here goes the rest of the week. And then your talk track in your head, well, this is just how it goes for me. That's as best as I can do. How do we set ourselves up for sustaining in our health from a mindset and intentional action perspective? David, do you want to take that one to kick us off? Sure. So what I've learned about myself, Nikki, is if I'm not intentional about the practices I put in place, it's probably not going to end well for me with my nutrition, with my health. The examples I'll give. Number one is my nutrition. So what that looks like for me, one of my friends and I were recently in a chat and he had said that in some of his healthiest times and his most fit times, he kept some nuts and cashews and almonds with him at all times. So that when he got hungry, he had a healthy snack to keep him satisfied. And then he didn't make poor choices with his nutrition. I think his version of poor choices is much different than mine. Mine would be a donut or a cinnamon roll or even a McDonald's double cheeseburger with large fries and large Coke. But one thing I learned is, hey, I'm on the road a lot. I live very fast paced and I do that intentionally. And so if I don't get intentional about my nutrition and set myself up for success, I usually make bad choices, to be honest. And so for me, that's one area, that power of intention, knowing a weakness that I have, being self-aware, hey, this is just an area that I'm not great. So why not just instead of accepting that and saying, oh, you know what? I struggle with my nutrition. No, being intentional about taking action to try to change that. That's one area. Another area for me would be my workouts. Another thing I've learned is I'll pack my gym bag in the morning. And I make sure I have everything that I need, everything to work out, my pre-workout drink, so that I don't have to come home before I come to the gym. Because guys, I'm going to tell you, I love being with my wife. I love being at home with her. And it's very possible that once I get home and if I have to get my stuff together and go to the gym, unless she's going to the gym with me, it's uh, really not a great percentage of time that I'm going to go ahead and go. So what I've learned is, get all my stuff packed in my bag to go to the gym. I'm going to stop by the gym and get my workout on my way home. And then that way, when I get home, I'm home. But by setting the intention, being prepared, making sure I have everything packed, everything ready. Since I've started doing that, which has been a significant time now, man, my workout regimen has gotten so much more consistent because I'm being intentional about it and creating and manifesting the outcome that I'm 
trying to design versus accepting the busyness of schedule or the weaknesses that I have just organically. We've talked on the topic of the power of words so many times on these episodes. And this comes to mind for me when I think about my health is if my talk track and the words that I'm using for me is, well, I consistently have been falling off. I don't know how this week is going to go versus I am committed this week because I am strong and I know I can overcome this and I've set myself up the difference between what's probably going to happen because I'm not even setting myself up with an out like I did in the first line is so big. The power of our words and the power of how we talk to ourselves in setting up our week. Are we already giving ourselves an out before the week even starts? Then the outcome is probably going to struggle. And so you think about what have you learned about how you prepare yourself You feel really good when you spend a couple hours on the weekend food prepping and you're celebrating the win of getting that done and you've got these things. It helps to build you to say like, I'm set for success versus you're going in to the week without having those things in place. Like we talked about intentional action to be able to support you in doing a great job and so in following through on that. So I think the power of words, the power of our thoughts in order to sustain healthier outcomes If you're on the way to the gym, like David had shared, you know, he's got his gym bag packed and coming home is the thing that he knows, like, I need to just go while I'm out. Great. But what if your mindset is like, oh, the gym's just going to be a waste of time today. I just don't feel like being there. What can you do to take action on getting yourself fired up? Like, you know that if you walk into the gym that way, like Eeyore, you're probably not going to give it your best shot. How do you flip that around? And so You know, I have a couple of different things that I listen to that are like gym, pump them up, music, that will help me. And just really working on statements in my mind about what I want to accomplish or setting goals for myself before I'm going to head out of the gym. And so something to inspire rather than allowing just the dark cloud that I've created to follow me around, I have to really shift myself out of it. It's funny, Nikki, how often we create these outcomes that we share frustration. You shared about the lunch, the dinner after church experience or the gym experience where you're thinking, dreading going to the gym. This is a waste of time. I get to the gym and my workout is okay at best. How could we have possibly expected anything different? Nikki, for you in the lunch experience you talked about, how could you possibly have expected any different outcome than what you got? It's ridiculous. It's stupid that we expect these great outcomes when we go in with this head trash, with this stuff in our mind that we end up creating this negative outcome and then we complain about it. And it's like, what did we expect? So to your point, the gym thing is a great thing for using the gym and the family lunch experience because they're personal stories to us, but it's just a synopsis of a million different areas in our life that this applies to. And hopefully you can think of one that is pertinent in your life right now, that seems loud in your life right now, whether it's a family issue, whether it's a business relationship, whether it's fitness, nutrition, all the things that we're all working on daily. Before we move over into managing the pivot of you create and set these intentions, and sometimes they don't go as planned, right? It's just not what's meant to be, but how you embrace that. I wanted to share a couple of kind of wrap up tips on manifesting. And David wanted to hear if you had any thoughts there. So one is we have to be very clear on what we want. So whether that's the business meeting that we could easily say is always challenging, what is the outcome that we want? Getting really clear on, I want to walk away from this meeting feeling X or us all together in collaboration confirming X outcome. Getting clear on what you want is number one. You have to see it. It's going back to vision. It's thoughts become things. It's getting to the end result and getting really clear on what you want. Number two is confirming how that makes you feel. If what I really want is a powerful, challenging workout, I know that it makes me feel like a success. I know that it makes me feel accomplished. I know that it makes me feel like I can high five myself. I feel good physically confirming how it makes you feel so that you want to fight for that. We're doing this for a reason, not just like, hey, I want to do this because I think it's the right thing. Also, how it makes you feel. And then number three, what is your plan to get there? And so up front, because we operate on earth with a lot of other humans involved, we have to communicate our plan up front. Hey, I know that typically this has been going in a challenging direction today. 
I believe we can change it. And here's what I'm thinking we can do to get there and getting everybody on board or coming to that lunch, how I could have done that differently is acknowledge that I've been in a funk because my dog died and I'm just challenged. Acknowledge that this place right here that we chose for lunch is really not the dynamic that typically lends us into maybe the greatest for the six of us to be there. And be able to say like, hey guys, I just want to share up front. I've been challenged over the past week and a half with the loss of Tonka. I'm just kind of in a little bit of a down place, but I want to bring my energy today. So I just wanted to throw that out there. And hey, let's all embrace this space that we're in today and be grateful that we're here. It's something new and different and really setting the tone for that to help all of us to be able to be on the same page and communicating that. So just wanted to share kind of putting a button on when we think manifest to really set the intention, what that looks like. David, we'll talk about that quote that you shared when we were talking earlier. Tell us about the Mike Tyson quote. So we talk about being intentional and setting the intention and making a plan. And we share the personal examples in our lives recently of where that has shown up, but we are dealing with humans around us. All of us are flawed. All of us have our own issues. And so no matter what the intention is, And no matter how committed you are to getting that outcome and taking the action that you set in place to achieve that outcome and you show up with all the best intention. My favorite quote from Mike Tyson that you just referred to is every fighter goes into every match, every fight with a plan until he gets punched in the face the first time. How often we go into a fight, so to speak, with a plan and then we get punched in the face. It goes off the rails and then down we go. We're on the mat and we're not getting up the day shot, the meeting shot, the lunch is shot, and it is not coming back. I know you and I can relate to that. And if you're listening to this, hopefully you can relate to you go in with this intention and then the person says something you weren't expecting. A jab is made. A comment is made. Maybe something that you said that you were hoping would go one way in the business meeting went another way and suddenly you're not feeling heard. This isn't going the way you hoped it would. And then what? So let's talk about what happens when you get punched in the face and how you can pivot. The day doesn't have to go off the rails. The evening doesn't have to be ruined. The lunch doesn't have to be ruined. The business meeting can still achieve the desired outcomes, but it's going to take some resilience and some commitment to that and some ability to adapt and pivot and not get thrown off the rails completely. So let's tackle that together. Okay. That sounds good. I think another one to come back that's easy to is health and we're midweek and we had prepped for the week with our food and we said, you know what, this is going to be a five grams of sugar max per day and we're going to do this much water. Let's call it a gallon for this example. And Monday and Tuesday crushed it. Wednesday, something happened. Maybe we got a special delivery in the mail as a gift from a friend and it was something scrumptious with tons of sugar and we decided to do that. Or I forgot my water bottle, my big water jug, and I don't have it for the day. Rather than throwing everything away and saying, I'm just going to restart next week, right? Because the compound effect of just restart next week is we're never really going to get to the end goal that we want because we constantly, like every time that a shift happens that we weren't planning for, we go off track. I had a friend one time tell me, I do not believe in falling off the wagon. I was like, tell me more. And she said, because those words guide us to like, well, fell off the wagon. I'll have to figure out a new time to restart versus fell off, get right back on whatever you need to shift those words to. And so I think it's important to lock our mindset and our intention around, yes, this happened and I'm ready to overcome and get right back on and change or the outcome for what we typically have as a challenging conversation. I prepped it, set it up for success, but someone flies off the handle in the meeting. How do you manage that experience right there to not go and like make this another dumpster fire meeting to be able to say, Hey, we had agreed in the beginning that we were going to be really respectful. Maybe you need to hop off for now, or maybe you need to take a break and then come back. Right. And getting whatever it is that's causing the challenge out of the way so that we can keep on track but really that you're guiding the pivot, right? Rather than just falling off and letting that compound effect of being off take over. So Nikki, how important do you feel it is when you approach those situations based on exactly what you just said to just accept going in 
that it's very possible it's going to go off the rails. So to plan to get hit in the face. In that quote that I talked about, Mike Tyson, he said he goes into every fight planning to get smoked in the face because he knows and he's already planning how he's going to react when blood's coming out of his nose and he can't see very well. So how would you articulate that in life's journey to just plan that it's not going to go as planned to plan and be intentional about half in the pivot? I mean, I think it's going to happen more times than not. And what is your personal commitment to yourself to stay the course? So no matter what happens here, I'm going to keep a positive mindset and I'm going to work on getting to a celebratory moment from this gym experience or this business conversation or this challenging dynamic with our family at dinner. I'm not going to go low just because there's somebody else that's going to fall off. I'm going to stay here with my energy and keep consistent. That's my commitment to myself. And I'm going to work towards making sure there's something we can celebrate. Maybe the celebration could have been 30 times larger, but to be able to get to something that's celebratory at the end of this versus walking away from the table or walking away from the meeting and being like, that was a complete waste of time. That was a disaster. And you're just hard on yourself and down on yourself. What can you do through the pivot times to say, I'm proud of how I stood, stayed the course, proud of how I showed up and work through this, even though my manifestation didn't create the ideal experience, I still stuck the course and I showed up as to who I want to be in a healthy way. That's so good. So in your mind, what's a couple tools that you would give anyone listening to this to say, here's a couple tools you can have in your tool bag, knowing that things are going to go off the rails, knowing the business meeting is probably not going to go as you exactly hope it is, knowing the lunch is not going to go as exactly as you hope it is. What's a couple tools that you and I and all of our friends listening can utilize to pivot, stay committed to the objective, committed to the outcome, because we both have recognized and realized and we're sharing those with all of our friends that we have the power to design our life. We have the power to create the realities. That's real. And once we recognize that, that we're not powerless and we don't have to be reactive to the situations and circumstances around us, what's some tools that you would help us utilize as we wrap this up? In this particular case, I'm thinking my tool is to have something visible that reiterates who I want to be and how I want to show up. I'll write myself a sticky note or I'll see one of my favorite signs and the words that inspire me like right here in this space to keep me locked in because I'm very visible. The other is celebrating the littlest wins. If it doesn't go exactly like I wanted it to go, I look at everything that was wrong. I don't look at like, these two things went really well. It's a, did we win this situation or not? And it really tied to that outcome versus there was a couple of things that happened here that let's say that there's six of us at the dinner table and we set this up to be this very energizing. We're bringing in comedy. We spent so much time and the food that we think they're going to like. Okay. Well, let's just say that one of the people at the table is like, what is this? This is disgusting. Right. But everybody else enjoyed the food. And everybody else, like, why are we leaning into this one scenario versus the other five really liked it and leaning into that and celebrating that. And then I think just a toolbox item for me always is gratitude through the experiences. Like, what does that look like in the time where, okay, I just wrap this up and I'm going to get in my car. I'm going to sit there and relish in the gratitude for the experience just because I know from a feeling space really we attract more of what we appreciate and we're grateful for. So the more that we spend time in gratitude, taking time to be able to reflect and be in gratitude, I think the compound effect of our hearts and our energy and our vibe being in a good place, which gratitude brings it to propels more. That's so good. It's physically impossible to give gratitude and be angry at the same time. Yeah. Lean into the gratitude. Yes. Lean into the gratitude. On this podcast, we're committed to keeping the content to real life stuff with practical action items that we can all take to, well, get better. So here are the action items from today's episode. Number one, 
look at some of the most challenging situations you are dealing with. Ask yourself, am I part of, if not most of, the problem? How am I showing up? You must be willing to be honest in your answer. Love yourself enough to be truthful with yourself. Number two, make a plan. Set your intention on how you can show up differently to create a different outcome. Number three, know going in that it most likely won't go exactly to plan. Be prepared for that. Prepare for how you are going to show up when the plan doesn't work. We have the power to create the outcome we want. Let's do it. So you just listened to this episode. Now, join us in being addicted to betterment. Please subscribe to the show, share with your friends, tag us, and please take a moment, leave a review. Yeah, we do want your stars, but we also, we really want the feedback.